Hello and welcome everyone to episode 27 of One Piece at a Time, the One Piece read-through podcast where we read and discuss five chapters of the One Piece manga each and every week. I'm your host, Derek Bittner, and I'm joined by my wonderful co-host and freelance letterer at Shonen Jump, Brandon Bovia. How you doing, Brandon? Doing pretty good. For some reason, I have a particular disdain for crappy people in power, which seems to be the theme of uh, this set of five chapters. <laughs> yes, that definitely seems to be the case where we should not really enjoy those people that abuse that uh, uh, that power and we should try to displace them as much as possible so i think this is all both <laughs> going to be one of those things where boy i hate this person i hate dealing with this person but man is it going to feel good that when they get the crap beat out of them because oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, also, uh, I work on Dragon Ball Super and Kaiju and a bunch of other. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, you know, <laughs> you got the spiel at this point. You got the spiel. Definitely check that all that out. Brandon does wonderful work, and uh, always glad to talk One Piece with him. But uh, let's mm-hmm. let's see how this all goes as we jump into Chapter One Hundred and Thirty One, Wapple of Tin, with uh, and. At least we get something nice at first. We get Django's da- uh, getaway dance. It looks like he's getting chased away, but he looks so dang cool doing it. This is probably the coolest he's ever looked. <laughs> yeah, look at that style. Like I love that pose and just. <laughs> uh, I also love how That's just a good I think illustration. This is Luffy's boat with Zoro is still continues on its grand tradition because. Oh it! Oh my god! I didn't think about that. <laughs> yep. Luffy's original <laughs> boat lives on. <laughs> oh, that rules! That's the. <laughs> <laughs> nice continuity there. But yes, Django is out on his own, away from the island. All new stuff that we, we have, you know, now those three kids won't be bothering him anymore. Yeah. Goodbye, <laughs> Syrup Village. <laughs> Did we ever get a title drop for Syrup Village? Because I, I don't remember that I at don't all. Rem- I don't remember either. And I was like, why do I know that it's called Syrup Village? I don't remember. Uh, whatever. I got, I got nothing. <laughs> But, Maybe uh, the anime. <laughs> it could be the anime. I I honestly have no clue. But last yeah. time we got the very, very strange declaration that Zoro spotted somebody standing out on the water. Yeah. And we get to see it <laughs> right off the bat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. This weird looking dude. <laughs> He's got, he looks like a court jester. He's got uh, like a pack of arrows or like a bow and arrow. And it just... <laughs> <laughs> it's I, I think if he wasn't standing on water, I think Luffy and Usopp would have to rub their eyes like, what am I seeing? Yeah, they were like, uh, what? But yeah, he's just like standing directly on the surface. He's not like floating or anything like he's just he's just there. <laughs> and I love I love that they, they sell it so much because you have these like just these shots of him. Like just kind of standing, like in front of in front of the Mary. <laughs> mm-hmm. This is this is this is the most like work for the anime, you know. Just like yeah. here's how you should phrase it out because it's just that long shot of him standing in front of the boat, reaction shots from each of the crew, and then just the payoff yep. is, boy, sure is cold today. Today, yeah. <laughs> and then they treat it normal. <laughs> Normally, it's like yeah, they're yeah. just like uh huh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like wait, really? And they're just like yeah, <gasps> and it just stops like that. It's like I was cracking up. Like, there's so little dialogue, but it's so ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Oda's just comedic timing. Just, it it always hits. That and the fact that, like, it's like these two pages are a spread, too. Yeah. So you, you get, like, just the spread of, like, these two pages of just, like, this one gag of everybody, like, sitting around and staring. Like, uh, what is happening? Yeah, that's that's a little weird. I mean, we find out. I I completely forgot this. This me like, too. I, I could not remember how he was able to stand on water. Turns out that he's actually on a submersible pirate ship. It feels more like a. It's got like a transformation gimmick. It's it's more like a Gundam than a pirate ship at this point. Yeah, it, it's like a <laughs> orange, like a tangerine. Yeah, yeah peel out, cool. and the <laughs> center of the ship is like the mast, and the, it protects itself in the water. It's really cool and design yeah i feel like oda doesn't get enough credit for how bonkers a lot of the pirate ships are in uh in one piece yeah i I think about the um way back in the barazzi how it had like it had like a dedicated gimmick for like making a battle arena (laughs) where it just had like this full like mech transformation sequence this is rad it's it's ridiculous and fanciful and just so much fun and you're right i never hear people praise that aspect of them i i definitely hear a lot of praise about toriyama's like machine work and machine drawing yes yeah it, it is at least on like on that level of just you know complete 
absurd detail. Yeah, the, the, you got the concept of pirate ship, which is probably the most standard thing you can come up with, and yet they find all these different ways to make them yeah. utterly di- ridiculous, which makes sense. Some of considering them are really out there. Yeah. It is a world mostly made up of water. Mm-hmm. It, it makes sense. I also love the little thing is it's shaking the Mary, of course, but yep. you got Sanji there holding Nami's bed steady. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That is uh, he's priorities. Yeah, that that's pretty cool to just like take care of it to that effect. That's that's fun. And then we see the full transformation of this giant boat, even a little bit underwater about what it's all there. It's just like, my God. Yeah, that's <laughs> we even got a name for the ship. The the Bly King. Yeah, that is an interesting name. Yeah. And it's, it's got kind of like a hippo face. Yeah, the front. a bit of a hippo face, got a crown, got the the the. the Jolly Roger with with uh, as we'll see, as we've see is Wapple's face, Wapple's yeah. <laughs> chin, and all that. But I also love the reveal how how he does the reveal of Sanji going to go going to check out what's going on up top, and as he comes out, he just lights a cigarette and he just asks what happened, and it's just they're all surrounded by yeah th- that I, that reveal I thought was really cool. Yeah, it is a shockingly cool set of events here for what for, yeah, for what started pointed. as just insanity <laughs> yeah yeah it's a very cool way to show it and then you, you sort of like the way oda introduces wapal himself it's such a cool well i don't know about cool uh, i don't know if i'd ever used the word cool to describe wapal but the way he is introduced i think you, you sort of instantly understand what he's all about because he's like he's got like a piece of meat skewered on a dagger and he's like he's eating the meat and then, like, you turn the page, you know, like, ready to take a bite, and then he bites the sword. Yeah. It's, and it's sort of it's, a cool, like, like, oh, my God, what the... Messes... Yeah. What messes is up with that? <laughs> yeah, and he's apparently... Uh, the What is it? The, the Tin Tyrant Pirates is the name of his crew. I completely yes. forgot about that. <laughs> I, I completely forgot about that. But, yeah, it, it's immediate intrigue. It's like, well, this dude definitely has a devil fruit if he's eating a, yeah. <laughs> eating a knife yeah. like this. E- even eating the hilt, you know, just as for a good dessert. Yeah, it's all jeweled and whatnot. And he's just like, oh, okay. And mm-hmm. they, he basically says, hey, we want to go to the drum kingdom. Do you have anything like a log pose or eternal pose for it? It's like, nope, never heard of it. It's like, all right, all right. In that case, we'll take your treasure in your ship. And then he says he's hungry. And immediately, and I he- hate this dude because he <laughs> eats the Mary. He just eats just... Oh, man. <laughs> and I love yeah U- Usopp's reaction in particular. You know, He's very... He's not having it. Oh. That yeah, it's just, the way his it mouth just makes extends, me uncomfortable to look at. Yeah, <laughs> his mouth extends so much, and he's just chewing it all up. And I'm like, what yeah. the hell? It is the oddest power. A hippo is a good iconography for this ship. And then he eats the, starts eating the anchor ro- uh, rope, and there's like, hey, yeah. Wapple's eating. Don't move. And then that's like, all right, time to beat these guys up. Yeah, <laughs> it's all right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's where I was like, that's what, we should have just done this from the start. <laughs> you really should have. Vivi hears all this stuff going on. It's like, what the heck is happening? And obviously these normal dudes have no chance against the crew. I also, you know, she leaves crew in charge of Nami. You know, it's just <laughs> in, he's, he's got it. He'll take yeah. care of it. Yeah. Karu, I, I trust Ka- uh, Karu implicitly. He's 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 all good. <laughs> but I also love that's like this whole big fight's going on, and Wapple is just continuing to, continually eating the poor Mary, just always always uh, just getting just just falling apart. <laughs> it got a reprieve at the, at the little drum or yeah, li- not little drum, but little, little garden. garden. Yeah, yeah. And now already, this next arc is getting beat up even more. It's like my God, yep. this poor ship. Just can't, just just can't get a can't catch a break. Yeah, and that and that's when we hear thanks to the men. It's like because Luffy's going to attack Wapple. It's like you dare challenge Captain Wapple. He'll devour you with the power of the Munch Munch fruit. And he he seems to oh well, like he grabs on to what looks like he Luffy's eats head. all of Luffy except for his arms, yeah. which are still stretching yeah. out. Yeah, they're still stretched out. Yeah. <laughs> it's just what a visual because uh, while this is happening vivi comes up and it's just like what is going on <laughs> like what a what a visual to to come to come aboard seriously to. <laughs> and apparently luffy's hard to eat because he's too chewy but thank god yeah, for the gum gum bazooka yeah he is rubber gum gum bazooka just launches him luffy out of his mouth and sends wapple flying into the distance <laughs> doing a team rocket flying off again yeah seriously <laughs> but uh vivi seems to 
have recognized him right before he went flying off. But uh, that's where the chapter ends. It, it, it's so quickly. Like, w- hmm. it's an insane chapter, but I love it because... Yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> what did, uh, as, as we'll get into in a little bit here, like, that's the introduction to our villain. <laughs> yeah. Kind of right off, um, you know, like, Luffy just sends him flying, and that's kind of it for a little bit. <laughs> I, I, I'm I trying to remember the first time I saw the anime mm-hmm. and getting introduced to Wapple and it was like, did I think he was just a one-off that just sort of left or did I think he was going to come back? I don't know because I can imagine a lot of people thinking, well, that was a weird aside. Or yeah, right. Like, he's uh, like, I'll be back. Especially because they introduce his devil fruit right away. Yeah. 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 And usually they save those. Yeah. Usually it's kind of like a build up, but yeah, it's sort of, it's. It's such a fascinating and, and kind of differently differently structured to to how these arcs normally go. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it, it's. I don't. I don't know if it's necessarily a good thing or a bad thing. Like, I don't really know how I feel about it. I, well, I know how I feel about Wapple as a villain. He sucks. Oh um, yeah, Wapple but, is. Yeah, just that the decision to put this here. Uh, it's just, all right, okay. You know, that's. We'll, we'll see where that goes and how I'll feel about it by the end. Yeah, it, Wapple is. Pr- not to give too much away. Uh, I, honestly, just by. What you see, what you see him in these five chapters is enough to really kind yeah. of put it out there that, yeah, he might be one of the most despicable villains in this, in this yeah. log up yeah. at this he's, point. He's easy to hate. <laughs> oh, very, very, very. But we do have an SBS, and there's one thing I did want to point out is like somebody, yeah, a, a question was asking about Zeph losing his leg and how in the anime he had to chop lose his leg in, uh, thanks to the ship. Oda basically goes into is like, yeah, it's it's too much for kids and little kids watching the show. So uh, kudos to the animators who create such wonderful works while being careful about things like that. Like I, actually having to think about that sort of stuff. So, hey, send her a letter. Yeah. Cheer him up. Did we talk about that? I'm, I'm pretty sure we did when we yes, covered that we, material. Yeah. We did bring it up because I, I was that's when I was trying to find a good clip for that section. And I mm-hmm. watched I saw that part. and I was like, oh, wow, I forgot that they didn't show him cutting off his own leg. Yeah, yeah. Pretty cool to see Oda acknowledge that. Yeah, and kind of a, a positive spin on it too. I feel like I feel like a lot of folks might be like, "Oh, the anime just oh, this, you know, they're toning it down, the, the cowards." But you know, there are many considerations that have to be made. Uh, it, this is those, ostensibly those for kids. Yeah, yeah. You know, air, airing on Sunday mornings. You know, it's you can't mm-hmm. can't show everything. It, it, it can get re- get away with a lot, especially more than American shows, it seems. But oh yeah, there's some limits. But yeah, yeah, for sure. I think I think that's something that, especially at the time, a lot of folks maybe didn't understand. Mm-hmm. Is that like you know, like like anime is not just like a free for all of all of the all of the violence and, and naughty bits. Yeah, uh, just, just just because their standards are different from ours. I mean, you know, I I they, remember they still being have things they have to look out for. Uh, one of the a friend hooked me up back in the day with a CD that showed the end of Cell and basically all the great Siaman stuff. Uh, uh, oh yeah, for the yeah, next yeah. arc, and I distinctly remember because it was you know fan subbed, of course. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. There was a section where a Cell regenerated again, and they translated it as P- Piccolo saying, "What the f? How the f does he keep uh, reforming?" <laughs> or what? That's like how the classic. The, yeah, it's like, geez, like man, yeah, I, I yeah, thought it's- like. Japan must be hardcore to allow that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't, it doesn't, like, I feel like it's kind of a, uh, I mean, we're getting a little off topic here, but like, yeah, it's, it's kind funny. of a, it feels like a response to how kind of like ultra watered down a lot of, a lot of the anime was when it came to America. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the fan translators were like, well, uh, this stuff's actually super hardcore. So we're going to put in, you know, all of, all of the worst words that you can think of in it. Oh, totally. And it's just like, that's not, in, 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 of course, in reality, it's sort of like a healthy in between is kind of the best. Yeah. The, the best solution. Yeah. Just keep it accurate. That's all. Yeah. 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 I, I gotta say, I was, you know, I, I said once before that all these title stories are completely new to me at this point this one blew me away with chapter it, i laughed so hard at this one <laughs> to see i mean they're not wrong that it's a fateful passing it's not just the ridiculousness of morgan and Django passing each other it's the let's, all of a sudden you remember right Django was who hypnotized morgan to think he was so great yeah yeah oh wow oda <laughs> <laughs> it's all coming together yeah I can't believe we still haven't seen the last of Morgan. Who knows if he'll show yeah, up again? Yeah, he's still at this around. 
he is still around. I'm, I'm, wow. <laughs> <laughs> also, I think kind of shows how, I'm trying to think of the timeline, because I guess Kobe, the Kobe and Mepo stuff could be happening probably around the same time that Luffy and was d- dealing with all the Sierra Village stuff, so they could mm. kind of line up like that. Okay, uh, yeah. timeline. Okay. We're in the past still, especially because Buggy caught up to everybody else. So Buggy is still that's, kind of the one that mm-hmm, t- mm-hmm. went over the longest amount of time, almost. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Buggy's adventure. We yeah. Still, it'll never end. No, definitely not. So, yeah, we'll get into the chapter itself. And Luffy's still trying to find, think of ways to help out Nami. And they just suggest, like, let's throw some water on her. That'll cool her down. <laughs> yeah. I do love, I, I love Vivi getting in on the uh, physical violence <laughs> gag. It's just not, not, of course, you know, Sanji's just like, are you crazy? And kicks him. But I love that Vivi gets in a good hit as well. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, she's close enough now that she's allowed to hit Luffy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> if we can get in on these antics, but they have they were like, well, we have to drop anchor somewhere because it's going to be night and we cannot sail without Nami at that time. Good call. Just just this sweet little scene where she wakes up in the middle of the night, sees everybody's just sleeping in the same room with her, all passed out, Vivi next to the bed, and it just comforts her as she lays back down. Yeah, and, oh, it's cute. Yeah. They're all they're all looking out for her. Exactly. It's that nice little camaraderie between the is, crew. Is Zoro sleeping on Karu? Uh <laughs> yes. Yes he is. <laughs> <laughs> Luffy's foot is on on the back of Usopp's neck. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a nice sweet scene. But as Sanji is keeping watch, he remembers what happened after Luffy launched Wapple away. And mm-hmm. obviously, because he's a devil fruit user, the crew has to book it because he'll sink. This is a very, this is a, a very team rocket exit as well for these guys. Are just, I mean, they're basically like, yo, you'll rue the day. Remember yeah. us. Remember us. <laughs> oh God, it's wild. <laughs> I do have the little slight, I guess, slight foreshadowing. Just a bunch of idiots, nothing to worry about. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's it, again, it, at this point, they do not seem like a threat. They're just too yeah, yeah. ridiculous. They're kind of, it, it's almost funny how kind of back to normal they are. Uh, you know, they kind of have this whole conversation while, while Usopp's back to repairing the ship. And, and poor Usopp having to repair the ship. And it's such a rough repair. Yeah. Oh, and... and I, I I don't know if we, we had ever called this out, but I love how consistent it is, too. Like, because you still see, like, the sort of metal wrapping around the mast in every mm-hmm. shot that it's in. Yeah, same um, for back when, special seat. Um, yeah, yeah. Like, it's all... It, it, it's I, I feel like for how cartoony One Piece is, they could absolutely get away with just like, oh, you know, oh, the Mary got damaged again, and, you know, you sort of magically fix it off screen. But, like, the damage it takes is consistent. <laughs> yeah. And, and it, it, it stays there. It's sort of like Zoro's scars. You could easily not have him any scars, but he still has the, the, the leg scars now, and now the, the, and the, the car, scar across his chest. Like, they'll heal quickly, but things that yeah. do lasting damage stick around. It's a really impressive attention to detail. I, I feel like I feel like many authors would just forget how many little like moving parts and things to juggle uh, details to juggle yeah pretty much i mean i know i'd have a hard time keeping track of it especially when it comes to drawing just all those different angles you have to sort of map out how it looks on the whole so you can get it from each angle just right so it's a it's a lot of work but we also get a, a lore drop from Vivi as we learn more, even more about the Grand Line. Each island can be divided up into four types, summer, spring, autumn, and winter islands. And each of those islands has four seasons. It makes sense to kind of like the climates we have here, but they're just much more, rather than the hemispheres for the, you know, the normal world, it's each island has one of these situations. And that, that's why the seas are so mixed up because of that. But yeah. if you get to a more consistent climate... That's in, an indication that you're close to land. I don't actually think this comes up again. Uh, maybe, maybe in the uh, near term, but I know I don't, I don't think this gets brought up again for a while. But it is sort of a cool explanation. Like I think it's all just like to sort of lead to the idea that like every every island is kind of its own microclimate. And it's 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 sort of an in-universe explanation as to why like things can be so different from island to island that even. Uh, even the ones that are so close together physically can be very different. I mean, we're going from a tropical ancient area to a winter place, and we know that Alabasta is a desert. Yeah. So, and they're ostensibly pretty close to each other. 
it, it's it's good world building. Might not come into much, but it definitely explains why things are the way they are. Yeah, it, it's definitely it's like there is. I mean, for for the most part, no rhyme or reason to the way the islands in One Piece why they are the way that they are. Like it's just. I think it's a, it's a good way to tell the reader to not have to worry about that. <laughs> You're like, how is the desert so close to the ice, so close to the prehistoric? Like, eh, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then, hey, they find an island. I, I love this little bit that's like Luffy's down there with Nami and he hears like they found an island. And he's like, isn't this great? You'll be cured soon, cured soon, Nami. And he's just like shaking, <laughs> the top shaking. And Zora finally says, go have a look. <laughs> That's what he's, he's... He just wants to see it so bad. Yeah, he's so excited. <laughs> he's definitely in his happy place here. And meanwhile, of course, Usopp eh, he comes down with his don't go on the island disease is coming. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> see, this one doesn't even look that dangerous. I don't know what Usopp's so afraid of. Yeah, it's... Just wintry, it looks but way he, more welcoming than Little Garden. <laughs> for sure, for sure. And he's just so used to danger coming out. But they, they start sailing inland, and Luffy's still just so happy to see all the snow. Until Usopp brings up the point that, hey, aren't you a little cold dressed like that? And, he, and Vivi points out it's only 14 degrees, so yeah. <laughs> and that's when Vin, Luffy finally realizes, oh, hey, it is like, cold. Oh, it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit of a delayed reaction. A little bit. He's, he's like Slowpoke. It, it takes a little while for his brain to recognize things. Yeah. Time to go look for a doctor. And of course, Luffy and Sanji volunteer. But they're immediately greeted by the people of the island. And they're all saying like, hey, turn around, get out of here. We don't accept pirates. This feels like the whole village or like everybody nearby is just kind of like... Uh, they they they're all they all came packing heat, <laughs> mm-hmm. ready to fight off pirates. They are surrounded at this point, and they're just trying to explain. It's like, hey, we need a doctor, help us. And they're like, hey, they, hey, you're trying to trick us. So we don't believe you. Uh, no pirate can set foot in here, so just leave. Which, hey, this is kind of the reaction that most people would probably have towards pirates. Yeah, yeah, I feel like it's the the most sensible reaction to uh, having seeing a pirate ship just pull up. And then we have a truly tense moment where they actually take a shot at Sanji. He's able to dodge it. Yep. And he he's ready to ready to fight. He's like, "How dare you?" Yeah. He's, he's like, "How dare you do this?" And he's Vivi's pissed. trying to hold her hold him back, and then she gets shot. Yeah. And in this page, she looks downright dead, mm-hmm. and Luffy's ready to to go. And they're all lining up their guns, but Vivi is uh, is alive, and she actually throws herself in front of Luffy and says, "It's just a scratch." Don't fight them. And it just tries to negotiate more. It's like, we won't set foot on it, but can you send us a doctor? Our navigator is very sick. Just help us. And she even admonishes Luffy. It's like, you're a failure as a captain. This is probably the most, like, princess-like that Vivi has acted. Or just, like, the way that she she is just, like, dead set on negotiation being the right path of action. And it, and it works. It is... A really good leadership moment from Luffy because he's not had to negotiate like this. Usually his good naturedness comes across for people and they're like, oh, I accept you. Yeah, or, yeah. you know, like they're obviously bad guys. So it's OK for him to just attack right away. Yeah, but these it, are it's just... cool that he immediately accepts. He sort of acknowledges the situation. Like, I was wrong. OK. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a good moment for Luffy. A good evolution of how, how he is. And yeah, he... You know, humbles himself. He's obviously stronger than all these guys, but bows down and is like, please help us. Yes. And that's enough to convince them. Luffy even acknowledges, like, man, you sure are smart. <laughs> our kind of uh, uh, our, our hook on the last page of the chapter is this little hint that uh, he says that there's only one doctor in this country and she's a witch, which is uh, pretty, um, a little foreboding. Yeah, it's like, what is that all about? That's That's a little weird. So I guess we'll find out. There's not much in this SBS section except for the one that the person that actually plays saxophone saying, uh, you know, Igram didn't really hold the, the saxophone that well. <laughs> you, you did it wrong. <laughs> it's like, I was like, oh, right, that guy. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's totally bad at this. That's all his fault, not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, it's good. Bl- blame it on the character. Look, it's not, <laughs> it's fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, God. So, yeah, that, that, that was fun. And, man, I, I gotta say, I've been loving 
these chapters. They have the insanity of the one, a good teaching moment for Luffy, and just it, it feels like it's each one's building up very well. Yeah, I'm I'm always a big fan of these sort of like really early arc chapters where we're kind of at the setup phase for everything. You're you're watching all of the moving parts kind of fall into place. You're learning along with the crew, like what kind of insanity is in store. Yeah, for you. yeah. It's it's yeah. that adventure spirit mm-hmm, that I mm-hmm. really do appreciate about One Piece. That made me okay with with filler for the most part just because hey i still get to see these guys on an adventure that's cool yeah yeah it's all it's all about the adventure and you know. and in this case this country doesn't have a name it's, that's already some intriguingness uh, intrigue right there it's like what's going on here <laughs> it's interrupted by Usopp seeing a bear and it's just like oh that's just a hiking bear <laughs> <laughs> don't forget to bow <laughs> it's a mountaineer tradition it's just like oh I love cool. all of the wildlife in, in this nameless country there it's probably some of the weirdest we've seen so far <laughs> yeah I mean we were looking at dinosaurs before but they acted like dinosaurs we did not get any yeah. kind of hiking bears it's it's like the <laughs> animals that match the cover stories <laughs> when we you know have yeah, them just interacting yeah. with animals and then yeah, we get a nice little cover page. Uh, not Nothing too crazy, but it's funny to see just the focus squarely on just Luffy, Nami, and Sanji. Yeah. Interesting stuff there, I suppose. In the meantime, we see what Zoro's up to, and we get to see more of his stitching on his feet, and he takes yeah. off his shoes. It's like, all oh, right, I can start training for, wheel, for real. I mean, a couple of chapters ago, he was holding up just like, what was it, like 500 kilos or whatever of weight? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he was working with 500 kilos of weights, and apparently that's not start. That's not training for real. He's, he's sick of taking it easy. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to train by taking a mind clearing midwinter swim. Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh, I, I with Karu. Holy crap! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just, ah. mm. The others arrive in the snow village. Bighorn get to see all the strange animals walking around like we got actually we see do see it later but the um furry hippo you got the the ram it's cool being introduced to all this no, yeah. just a fun little joke about this large woman walking by and Usopp and <laughs> luffy bowing to her because they think she's a hiking bear oh, i didn't notice that detail <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh these two dorks I know. It's like because it was up. It freaks out about it. It's like, look, the hiking bear, and you just. Oh they, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, I didn't notice that they were bound. So ridiculous. <laughs> oh god. But yeah, they, they, we've we learned that the leader here is a guy named Dalton. It's all civilians. Yep, he's got a little, kind of kind of a square face and square hair. Yeah, I guess I didn't even notice the square uh, squareness of it. You have those little triangles, of both his hair and his beard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apparently, there's some sort of election, and everybody's voting for him. He's like, even though he thinks he's not worthy for it, but there is that. Yeah, I don't know when that one's going to come up again. He's at, he's immediately sort of recognizes Vivi. Oh yeah, <laughs> I've seen you somewhere before. <laughs> hmm. It's like no, no, it's just your imagination. I no, you, you've definitely not seen me before. <laughs> and uh man they get the room warmed up and her te- nami's temperature has hit 107.6 degrees dear god yeah i mean dalton you know he's just yeah if it goes any higher she'll die <laughs> yeah i i don't i don't know if this is shown in stuff either i feel like I, that's pretty high for yeah a fever. i don't know when death is for fever but that seems like it's pretty close like it, it, she yeah. is once again on death's door, she's not had it. She's not had it easy these last couple of islands. So they're like, "All right, whatever. Just give us the witch. Show show us where this doctor is." And uh, they got this joke joke still going on. It's like, "All right, look out that window." And they look out the window. And it's just a bunch of snow in because of Luffy and Lucy. <laughs> yeah, I love the, the little high five. Uh huh. <laughs> and they got the little detail there that Sanji went out there and knocked them over. Because you see the Rex <laughs> snowman outward, outwards. Oh, but yeah, the, the the mountains are the Drum Rockies, and on top of those, the top of the highest peak is a castle that has no king, and the only doctor in the country is Doctor Kareha, who is called the Witch. There's just no way to contact her. She just sort of does her own thing. We get this whole setup around her. This this these talks about her. She's 140 years old. She likes pickled <laughs> plums. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I love this specifically where she's like, she comes down to the mountain whenever she feels like it. She looks for patients, treats them, and then she takes whatever she wants in compensation and goes home. Yeah. It's like, man, she sounds na- nasty or like a pirate. It's like, but how'd she get down? And they, they got this whole fun Christmas theme of like, oh, it's on a sleigh with a pulled by a reindeer. 
Yeah, <laughs> that visual is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> just like, just a weird messed up Santa. Mm-hmm. It looks like a reindeer here, but Dalton says it's a beast that they've, unlike anything they've seen before. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know what's up with that. But Usopp immediately thinks it's an abominable snowman, which, okay. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. But, yeah, because because of the way she is, they don't like to get involved with her if they can help it. I mean, I would I would imagine not. It just kind of sucks for this poor little country where they've got, we literally have one doctor. <laughs> and she sucks. She's kind of rough on us. Yeah. And they're just like, hey, this uh, this is a little ridiculous, but Luffy immediately makes up his mind. He just kind of wakes up Nami and says, hey, uh, there's only one doctor, so I'm going to go climb that mountain to just, get you there. Like, Mm. <laughs> yeah and everybody else is like no that's D- what are you doing <laughs> no don't that's stupid that's stupid it's too much for her. she won't make it if you fall it'll kill even you but uh, nami's on board she just thinks i have to get better right away she's like yeah let's do it i'm, I'm counting on you just mm, that that bromance high five I, again that implicit trust between yeah. nami and luffy whenever things get bad yeah and that's 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 good stuff of course, Sanji decides to volunteer to go along with him. Uh, with him. Uh-huh. So it's going to be uh, this trio climbing up the mountain because Vivi and Usopp obviously can't make this climb. <laughs> so they, they hook up uh, Luffy with some meat, tie Nami tightly onto his back, give him a sword to help support her weight, and are warned, warned before they leave about these things called lapins. Vicious flesh eating rabbits. <laughs> God. It's, it's such a built up with such a threat. Like, uh, it's certain death if you see one, if you see a pack. And I'm immediately thinking Monty Python is like, okay, is that what mm-hmm. we're dealing with here? And yep. uh, it's like, oh, that's all right. We'll handle them. We can kick them. Yeah. It's, yeah it's like, I'll kick them. <laughs> yeah. And at this point, at this point, it's like, yeah, that makes sense. They can handle them. Uh, you're not too concerned about it. But yeah. uh, they, they take off, and all you can do is sort of hope for them. And Usopp and Vivi, despite being cold, decides to wait out here for a while, watch them leave. And Dalton is just sort of yeah. encouraged by it. It's like, oh, okay, these are good people. Yeah. He's so trusting of them that he's, he's ready for a lore dump. Because <laughs> they did have a bunch of doctors before, but circumstances led them to leave because the country was defeated by pirates. And that shocks all of them. That's why pirates are kind of un- make us uneasy. However... This was a significant crew of pirates because it's kind of like Luffy's because there are only five. And the captain is Blackbeard. We got a silhouette of like five very tall looking characters. <laughs> mm-hmm. Finally having something that I can refer to in scene ahead, especially for something that does not get referenced in a long time to my recollection. Uh, yeah. That, oh, that yeah. Not come back. I didn't realize it. I didn't realize this was here. Yeah. This is, again, another very early example and I still don't know the full deal behind them. I know the last I was reading about them, they were it's insane what they are the, the what these guys are capable of. Yeah. And I also love that those silhouettes are kind of accurate. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I don't think I I called this out at the time. I don't remember. Um, but like when we were introduced to the um the seven warlords of the sea, then there was like all of the seven warlords like in silhouette and i don't i don't think a single one <laughs> was like what they actually look like no yeah i i think it i think it works because johnny yosaku's never seen them but Dalton That's has true. seen these pirates so it kind of works out yeah that does work out in a weird way there's a first mention of blackbeard you know if you don't know who that is uh just just give it some one, time. one of the one of the many things that i'll keep in the back of your head you're keeping a lot of things in the back of your head in, in the story but yeah you know, just We'll, we'll come back to that when we come back to it. Those side mentions that come back in a big way yeah. later on. It makes rereading this this manga fun. <laughs> it does. It really does. You're just like just see, seeing everything kind of come into place. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. good stuff. But hey, some actually think these pirates were a blessing because until then, the land was ruled by a king that made everybody unhappy. And it was called the Drum Kingdom. And the king's name was Wapple. Bah, oh, a big twist. <laughs> Which, man, I feel bad for this this village, uh, this, this country. Where it's like, you got a bad king or you get raided by pirates. Like, And the pirates ended up being the more preferable option. Right, you're just like, uh, well, okay. And this triggers a memory in Vivi. 
Mm-hmm. Like she remembers now. And it's at this point, it's like, oh, crap, that dude is important. <laughs> yep. It all comes back. Yep. Oh, boy. Are we getting into it now? And uh, another fun chapter we got coming up here with doc- uh, chapter 134, Dr. Kareha. <laughs> this one was so good. Uh-huh. We And we even get a little break from Django where yeah. we see the progress of Kaya, who's a doctor's apprentice, apprentice and doing fine. Yeah, seeing her just like healthy and up on her feet is really nice. And like, it, it's interesting because I think we talked about this during the arc itself about like what the actual setup is with Serap Village or if it's like close to any sort of like actual city. Because this looks like mm-hmm. a city that they're in. Yeah, it, it, so you see it, a proper town now. So you can see what more of this island had. It, it's, yeah, it's pretty yeah. cool. We didn't, we didn't see any of that. <laughs> it was like, no. is, this, is this whole island just one dinky little village? Well, apparently not. No, definitely not. And it's cool to see her up and about. And hey, kind of appropriate that she's becoming a doctor's apprentice as we're dealing with another doctor. Yeah. Immediately concerns Dalton to know that the uh, that these two have actually encountered Wapple. I do love this this bit where Vivi explains that uh, her, her father took her to a meeting of kings. And that's why I saw Wapple. And then Dalton's like, a, a what? <laughs> <laughs> meeting of kings? Say this again? You know, I, I kind of dinged Vivi a bit for sort of immediately being like, oh yeah, uh, Mr. Zero is Crocodile, but I, I, I she can't keep her mouth shut. I, She's kind of I think bad that, that's that. just part of her character now. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's like, uh, I get said a little too much. <laughs> They're like, okay, what happened? The country just defeated, but the king's not only alive, but he's turned into a pirate. And Dolan says, no, Wapple's just, you know, the, the pirate thing, he's not actually a pirate. He's just scouring the seas in search of this island. So Vivi's like, oh, so he was defeated and driven off. Defeated? No. When they arrived, when the pirates arrived, they didn't even attempt to fight. They left. Trash. <laughs> <laughs> yes, immediately left. And this sets Vivi off. Oh, yeah. How could a king do such a thing? Like, that's, yeah. She is all he about the duty to, to hear this sort of thing about a king to abandoning his people. Like, yeah, you go, girl. I mean, we need, yeah, it's, we need it's more cool politicians like for Vivi, Vivi, too. Yeah. Like, like not only are we, you know, kind of getting some more information about, like, oh, this is this, you know, this was a kingdom ruled by kind of a crappy king but you know like on while we're already on a journey to help this girl save her kingdom it's like like man what are, what are you even doing <laughs> yeah it, it's it, even though we've seen nothing from baroque works as you know baroque works thinks they're all dead we still have yeah. something that thematically ties into vivi's story yeah it's well done in that way in a way that you yeah, it, might not have expected especially upon first meeting wapple mm-hmm but Oda said right off the bat, showed right off the bat with that crown on the on the on the pirate frag, Wapple is a king. Yeah, and and it's I guess it's interesting then that um because when we were in, first introduced to them a couple chapters ago, it was like they were trying to find an eternal pose to to, to get back. So they're basically lost. <laughs> yeah, they've just been going around in the sea, but they have a really good ship, so they can actually handle the Grand Line, and they're yeah. close enough that they can sort of run into it i just I, w- I would like to imagine the fact that like they they were sailing in circles for like three months yeah kind of dalton saying yeah the island belongs to those of us who remain and we want to build a peaceful new nation which is why we fear wapple returning more than anything else mm. yeah it's a lord dump but it's an interesting lord dump it's it like, is oh, an interesting man. lord dump and i feel like it yeah like, like you said it ties in thematically to sort of the greater context of what we're doing with VV as a whole. Mm-hmm. So it feels, it feels sort of like a little, here's what would happen to a country if um, in this world, if they had kind of a crappy ruler. Yeah. And then we switch over to Luffy and Sanji. And <laughs> I love this scene. It's so, yep. it's so ridiculous. And it, it also kind of throws you off balance in, in a way mm-hmm. because you're thinking, Oh, it's just going to be jokey joke because you know, we hear about these flesh eating rabbits. We see one. It's not that big. Yep. And we just have this conversation between Luffy and Sanji as this rabbit is trying to attack them, taking down a tree. (laughs) I do want to point out uh, before we move on Uh, uh, is that when the whole like when this whole scene starts, Luffy says he's like just kind of out of nowhere. Like, by the way, did you know that people who live in snow countries don't sleep? Uh, If you're caught up, that will mean something probably. (laughs) Really? Yeah. Yeah. Just kind of out of I was like, of course. Well, it's more of we don't have the full picture yet, even. But I, I there are some theories, and uh, I think there have been enough sort of little nuggets dropped over over the course of the story that 
it's that line is less out of nowhere than you might think. That is insane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm it just like, it, it doesn't come, come up, up again that? for a while. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. It just wow, man. <laughs> The details. It's it's amazing how stuff that seems like it has nothing to do with anything else still finds a way to tie into the grand story. Luffy does say he heard it in a village tavern, which means he probably heard it from Shanks. Actually, yeah, I think that that also is probably true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love how Sanji points out, I was like, then why did Dalton have a bed in his house? Oh, that must be his deathbed. His <laughs> deathbed. <laughs> Luffy, you're an idiot. Uh, and then Sanji's just talking about women in snow countries, you know, have silky smooth skin and just the ridiculousness of them dodging this increasingly Yeah, they're having a whole conversation <laughs> while there's just, yeah. Oh, I love it. Like, like uh, this conversation, you know, like, it, it just, Sanji's just like, I'm getting tired of this. And he just punts one of the snow rabbits. <laughs> yes, he punts that <laughs> snow rabbit that's been a, trying to attack them. And so they good. just move on. And it just seems like, oh, well, there's the snow rabbits. It's not a big deal. It's not going to be a, uh, that big of a trial. And then we see the actual lapin. It's like, oh, that was a baby. Uh, that's a, okay. <laughs> oh, crap. And we cut back to the village and Dalton, of course, is like, oh, I hope they're all right. They're, you know, the, the rabbits are as big as bears with the quickness of rabbits that attack in packs. So they're like, oh, geez. And then they find out from the, that woman from before that Dr. Correa is actually in the next town over. <laughs> well, uh, so all, all that climbing for nothing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they haven't even started climbing yet. They're just fighting through rabbits. And instead, even that's kind of for nothing. Even then, Wapple has discovered Drum Island. He's back. Things are not looking great nope. for anybody right now, really. We instead cut to Coco Weed, Coco Weed because, hey, this chapter is called Dr. Kareha. It's time to meet Dr. Kareha. Time to see the witch. We have this this boy crying in a tavern, says it hurts, and he can't he can't explain to his dad like what's wrong to him. It just something's wrong with his body, and we see just this figure walking over is like, oh, I've got a bad father over here. This this kid is not feeling well, so stand back. I'm coming in. And she just punches the door open, and we see Dr. Kareha, who's 139 years old, not 140. Yes. <laughs> with one of the... All right, I'm sorry. This is one of Oda's best female designs. She she might be my... Just, I love the... <laughs> She might be my favorite. Just, I love the 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 biker jacket, the crop top, with the sunglasses, just <laughs> the pierced belly button, the the, the, yep. the spiked wristband. <laughs> she is so trendy and cool. What a boss! I love her to death. And the fact that like we just. I know it's it's like a gag, but the fact that we have a character who's just legit 139 years old looking uh-huh. like this. <laughs> it is amazing, and I, I've seen. I forget where I saw it, but I, I oh, I know why. Because I, I bring up, I tweeted something out this morning regarding her. We'll get into that after this chapter is over. But I, when I was looking looking up uh, the gif in relation to it, a lot of people did like fan casting. They said Cloris Leachman for Correa. It's like, oh my god, oh, it d- is. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. The live action show better get on that. I think she passed away, but oh, it would have <clears> been so perfect if we could have got uh. Cloris Leachman terrible ah uh, i love it but uh <laughs> but yeah her we find out her it is a reindeer and its name is tony tony chopper which is a heck of a name yeah. for this uh, this that reindeer is a in a hat <laughs> yeah everybody's like i can't believe she's 140 years old she's like, i'm only 139 and it's like shall i cure shall i cure him he's like cure him of what it's like are you a doctor and i'm like all right we'll leave <laughs> well I, I love it she she well one she like she busts in by punching down the door <laughs> and then she's just like the secret of my youthful appearance. And they're just like, no, we didn't ask that. Yeah. <laughs> but she gets the kid up on the table, takes a look. She pinches his leg, does something to his leg. He's like, my leg, oh, my leg hurts. And it's like, see, now you've forgotten about the pain in your arm. And it's like, man, that is such a thing from my childhood. It's yeah. Like, it's like, ah, I, I hurt my, I like, Hurt my knee. Oh, we can cut off the leg. That'll take care of the pain. <laughs> it's like, well, I, I just Thanks, I love Dad. the child screaming while this is all happening too. <laughs> she gets into it and he's like, Oh man, it's she actually knows what she's talking about. Like she yeah, she's a witch, but she's really good about it. Uh mm-hmm. and she even talking about it, it's like disease has to be caught earlier, there's no hope for survival. But he's gonna be fine. He would have died for sure, other, sure otherwise. Just gonna make a small incision and it's like, Hey, give him a painkiller. And <laughs> 
Don't even bother. <laughs> Give him the medicine and just, hey, if you get stiff, put it on ice. You're good to go. And bam, she's done. She has him cured. But here's where we get into the part that makes everybody not really want her. For payment, mm-hmm. she's running low on garbage bags and toilet paper and rum. So, And she'll take whatever food she ha- they have. And half the shop's assets. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, it sounds like a deal to me. Yeah. Like I can't, I can't give you half my assets. And I remember and this is the thing I tweeted out. Like they make such a big deal about how ridiculous it is that she's taking all this. And I mean, I remember thinking like, I mean, yeah, it seems a little excessive to take the ha- assets, but it's not that different from American healthcare. It's not. It's Hey, half you're, you're making out like bandits. Yeah. Yeah, people go poor from this stuff. Yeah, hey, you look, you're... <laughs> I mean, if you look at Japan and how they get their medicine, of course, this is definitely ridiculous for them. Yeah, just one of the just one of those things that is, is portrayed as being ridiculous, but isn't that far from the truth, which kind of makes it funnier. Yeah, it's... Because I, I get the lesson they're trying to impart immediately with this, because yeah. it, everybody else is like, hey, you're just a cheat. You're taking advantage of people. I bet there was nothing actually wrong with the kid. And she just sort of ignores them, even though the yeah. reindeer is obviously not happy with this, this, these words. Until the boy says, oh, it feels so much better. Thank you. And that convinces the father to be like, OK, I'll, I'll pay you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, She's like, I'll only take 49 percent. Yeah, because the boy said thank you. It's like, oh, what a sweet tip. <laughs> and then she just puts her on her sunglasses and leaves like a boss. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. And I, I feel like the lesson is, hey, at least your family's alive. Who cares about possessions? Which, mm, yeah. I, I hey. okay, not a bad lesson. Not a great one when you look in the American healthcare system because, boy. <laughs> whew, I love that this. says something. Dr. Correa has basically, like, comes down from the mountain, fixes you, charges you, refuses to explain, leaves. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, you're better, so. Yeah, hey. <laughs> y- you know she's good. I love this character so much. Oh, yeah, yeah. Correa is amazing. And uh, th- th- I don't remember a lot of the details surrounding her, but there is... Oh, my God, there's so much fun stuff <laughs> mm. <laughs> with that character. I can't wait. <laughs> yep. And uh, that's the end of the chapter. But we do have Usopp's art corner. Not going to talk too much about this one, except that, man, they uh, squeezed in some art from much later in the series in this in this volume. Oh, oh, geez. Right? Spoilers. Yeah. Spoilers. Right? <laughs> My God, I can't believe they put Dang. that in. Okay. Wow. That surprised me. And then I had another surprise when I got to 100, chapter 135, Lappins. Mm-hmm. Because Django's da- Django arrives at the East Blue's most popular dest- destination, Mirball Island. And you remember a while ago how I talked about that short that was matched up to a bunch of AMVs? Oh, that yeah. had, like, Django dancing in a dance party and, and whatnot and had Luffy and them get involved, too. It was just this hmm. whole big thing. This is that island. Oh, my God. That's where they pulled it from. So even though they didn't adapt it, I wonder if it's the same sort of plot is going to happen, just not involving the straw hats. Yeah, that's it. Oh, man. Now, now I'm really curious to see where this cover story goes. I mean, it's called da- Django's Dance Paradise. So, like, I feel like that's potentially where it might be going. I'm not going to spoil it for you, just, to, just in case. But I, I'm wondering yeah, if okay. it's going to follow the same plot as that short. Mm. I will say it's fun. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's definitely fun. So we'll mm-hmm. see how that all goes. But in the meantime... We're back to Vivi and Usopp and Dalton rushing over to Coco Weed Village to try to meet up, up meet up with Correa in time. And she's like, I, I'm so sorry that I made that mistake. She came down from the mountain yesterday and I didn't think she'd come again so soon, but I was wrong. <laughs> it happens, you know. It, it just happens. We'll just have to ask her to return to her castle to meet up with him that way. That's when Dalton just sort of out of nowhere says, I'm sorry if only this doctor, this country had more doctors. Sort mm. of indicating some things yeah there's there's something more here but now it's time for the proper attack of the lapins and uh (laughs) they got some crazy claws i love the kind of like belly flop it does with the claws and this is a legit threat like we look at this and you could just see the waves of the of the lapins oh oh my god there's so many of them yeah and they're i start arguing like about what they actually are until you know, Sanji figures out that they're not polar bears. They're not gorillas. They're, they're, they have to be these lapins. And this is when we can, can the problem is that 
Luffy can't fight. He can't yep. jostle Nami or she'll likely die. And so Sanji has to defend them, but his kicks are kind of muffled in the same way of when he was underwater because of right, all yeah, the in... snow. Well, kind of kind of the worst situation for everybody. Yeah. 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 So all they can do is run and it is taking all Luffy has to, to not, not fight, fight back. back. Yeah. You know, this kind of sucks because I feel like in any if if were any other character than Sanji, you could probably comfortably t- tie Nami to them, but because it's Sanji, <laughs> it's the one character you wouldn't want to tie Nami yeah. to. Yeah. I mean, if Zoro had joined him, Zoro wouldn't be weighed down by any of this, so Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, he's still on the ship. Uh, he's yeah, he's, he's on guard guy, duty. I'm, I'm training. Yeah, well, he's actually going for a swim, but yeah, he's on guard duty. <laughs> and uh, well, speaking of the ship, well, Wapple has arrived, and uh, he just he's there, and he's oh, God, it just he's so despicable. We see all these men just laid out on the ground. Yeah, he's just killing everybody in sight. All the guards. God, that laugh, those faces. It is. It just makes him just immediately despicable. Oh yeah. And even this, like this, this is ridiculous. He's on top of this this hairy hippo, uh, this woolly hippo. Uh, he's like, "Onward, Robson. There, there. Are you still upset because I killed your brothers? Well, stop moping. This is a glorious occasion." <laughs> like, what an unnecessary detail. <laughs> yeah, but then this thing is actually ha- happy. It's like, like, oh, okay, I'm, yeah, we're, we're good. Ugh. It's like, yes, really. And then even more worrisome, they spot the going merry. It's like, no, yeah. don't hurt that ship even more. He could probably eat the whole thing, if I'm being honest. Oh, he probably could. And immediately orders them to kill kill them all, but th- there's nobody on board, so they don't know where they're at. But, turns out his his uh, lackeys actually are worth something. Because, like, upon inspection, the footprints leading from the ship lead the headed for Bighorn. And this is where mm. we meet Chess and Koro Marimo. I do like that their titles are the uh, the, the former Drum Kingdom evil magistrate and the evil chief of staff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta make sure you know that they're evil. Yep. Well, they're off to Bighorn, even though the, the Dalton, who is probably their best defense, is still just left Bighorn. So it's like, oh, this, this all these the like, whole mists. It's a comedy of errors. Yeah. It, it feels more rough than when it happened with Arlong. Everybody yeah. missing each other because, like, there's an active moving threat on multiple points. It's like there's multiple ticking clocks going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the, the tensions ramp it up real quick. Uh, even though we're, we're just at the start of this arc, and it, it feels like we've, we already have things moving in multiple directions. Yeah, it's crazy to think about. And even then, they still found out that they just missed Correa, of course. Yep. And now she's heading for the village of Giasta. So they gotta head there to make it. But before even that, Dalton's informed that Wapple has returned. I do love, just like immediately upon hearing this news, Dalton's just like, all right, I'm out. (laughs) Yeah. It's just, all right. (laughs) And and they do confirm he killed everybody. That's like, it's not main characters, but people are dying immediately because of this. That's how bad Wapple is. He didn't just beat them up. Yeah, yeah. Dalton takes off on his horse. He's ready to settle this. And I, I, this is such an interesting speech to end off on. Justice is yep. not what I'm after. You and I are guilty of the same sin. Just you wait, Wapple. And as he's riding, he actually jumps off and transforms into a buffalo? Like a bull? B- bull yeah, buffalo? bull. Yeah, this one complete. Well, all of this, con- I forgot about. I'm presuming this is Dalton's devil fruit. Yes. But like. Yeah, the whole... I, I don't remember anything about his backstory. I didn't remember that he had a devil fruit. So getting to this page, I was like, whoa, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's, it's just we're in for a ride. We are, and a very different devil fruit that allows you to transform into an animal, it looks like. Yeah, and I think that's the first time we've seen that. Yes, I believe it is. Yeah. So that is fascinating. And What a, what a panel to end on. Oh, I know. Oh, man, I love these chapters. I think these are some of the strongest chapters we've had in a while. It's just definitely a really strong opening to an arc. Like, I... It it has been so long since I've engaged with Drum Island that I'm kind of neutral on it. Like, my memories of it, like, I remember... I remember being really captivated by it by the end, but there's so much of it that is just, like, a blank slate now. So I'm I'm kind of surprised by how much I'm just, like, grabbed by it. 
it's so immediate they they have so many good moving parts and i i mean i loved little gardens opening i thought they did a really Mm -hmm. good job with that they immediately got you into the giants but to see all this stuff happening these villages it's it's that same sort of thing this village under tyranny it makes it a bit more large scale uh, ironically enough (laughs) comparison Mm -hmm. and i'm i'm so looking forward to reading the next set of chapters i'm oh i i I don't even know where it goes i i have vague recollections i think it helps that i don't have as much later one piece clouding up my mind that i can remember the early stuff a little bit better than you (laughs) that's true that is certainly true. I, I will say, I've not watched this anime, but I, I do have to mention that in Usopp's artwork, once again, Eloisa here at age 13 drew a baby pirate king, Luffy, a baby uh, Luffy with a crown. And mm. I've not seen the anime, but it really looks like a uh, ranking of kings. I, I thought the same thing. I was like, is that? <laughs> Wait a <Yeah>. minute. <laughs> like, huh. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, <That's>, yeah. <laughs> Eloisa was on to something. Yes, yeah, clearly. Yeah. Really, that's what it comes down to. Is like we are off to another fun arc, I think, with yep. a truly hateable villain, and I, I oh, think yeah. he only gets worse as time goes on. Oh yeah, that and man, I love I love snow areas so much. Like I remember reading this for the first time and just like just being kind of cozy, even mm-hmm. even though a lot of like horrible and uh, emotionally gut wrenching stuff happens in the story. But just the the setting, I think, is just perfect for what the story is. Yeah, yeah, it it. It does a good job with its moving its pieces around and making everybody highlighting some fun aspects. And uh, we'll get more into that as we continue on. But with that, I believe we've said all we've wanted to say about chapters 131 to 135 of One Piece. Thank you so much for listening. And you can find more of my ramblings and stream VODs over at BitNerd Games on YouTube or BitNerd with an underscore at the end on Twitter. And Brandon, where can everyone find you at? I'm at Brandon Bovia on Twitter, uh, talking about anime, manga, games, and my job. Not a lot of work stuff happening right now, or not not a lot of stuff that's out to talk to talk about um mm-hmm. but you know i try as usual um yeah that's it <laughs> yeah i think you recently had the newest chapters of both dragon ball super and kaiju so there's a, there's yeah, that that's true yeah yeah read go, those if you uh, haven't yeah seriously again kaiju number eight will take it'll take you like five minutes to read it, I mean, it, it's like 65 66 chapters but they, they go by so fast it oh just, yeah you, you can read it in an afternoon and yeah. of course you know if you're into Dragon Ball, more of more of that. It's more of the same. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, and if you'd like to help us out more, you can support the podcast over at patreon.com slash Derek Bittner. That's D-E-R-R-I-C-K-B-I-T-N-E-R to listen to the next episode three days early. And make sure to return next time as we discuss chapters 136 to 140 of One Piece. Until then, my friends, bye. Remember to take life one piece at a time. Well, it looks like your son just gave me a nice tip. So I've reduced my fee to 49%. I'll pay your price. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Hey, kid. This happiness you feel, don't you ever forget it. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) 